Okay, since we've seen the first lesson where we have seen a different derivation of the angular speed, I mean the relationship between the linear velocity or the tangential velocity with angular velocity. Now we are going to use this lesson to see the common definition, common terms or definitions in here, and then I'll show you another method of finding the relationship between the angular velocity and the linear velocity. So common terms in such a motion, we consider this diagram. Now, if we call this is our axis of course, if this is theta and this is the path, I mean the radius of the path created from here up to here is our distance or displacement, and this is the particle that is causing that displacement P. I mean that displacement S. This is always the upper level, that is I think is very easy, and this is called in the center of the circular motion. So that's sort of the first three term, which is the angular displacement. This is from here to here, is what they call the angular displacement theta. This is the direction s, I mean it's the distance s, traveled by a particle in a circular path of radius r. Theta is already is always measured, is always measured in radians, or radians, this is the symbol of radians. So how is it given? It's given by the displacement on the distance s over this radius. Here, as you can see there, and this we call this equation one. The second term is what we call the linear velocity or the tangential velocity in brackets b. This is given by this is given as displacement over time, the displacement moment or the distance covered over time t, and this is equation two. Then period of motion t. This is now factor. This is the time taken to complete one revolution. One revolution we mean by you, you start from here, then you come. So the time it takes you to complete a complete revolution is what we call the period. It's measured in seconds. Then frequency, these are number of revolutions made per second. It's always measured in hertz or per second. Frequency is always given as one over the period because it's the period is a complete revolution. Now the number of complete equations. 1 over t will be giving you the frequency at which you are making those revolutions. Then angular velocity in brackets omega. This is given as angular displacement, theta, as we say the angular displacement over time t. It's given by this. I'm going to come back here, but let us call this equation four. Now, what relations between omega and then the linear velocity? This is the angular velocity. This is the linear velocity. Now, one direction that combines this and this. Now, from one, you see that from one, our theta from there, our theta is equal to S over R. But from two, from two, you see if I make the subject, V is going to come and divide that side, T is equal to this. Now, remember my angular velocity is given by this. Now, when I put in theta and also I put in T, that's what I have. Now, I write this, this is the same. You would have seen it at once that it's going to cancel. But anyway, here it's dividing this, divide this, it's dividing this. You know, if you are dividing, you take the reciprocal, the reciprocal of this is that this S is going to cancel. The big many in V over R, which is there. And if you take this beside, we have the angular velocity, I mean the linear velocity, equal to the radius times the angular velocity as we saw in lesson one. Period. Now, this is from me up here determining in terms of annual velocity, but I'm going to show you this method here. Let us first go through the other method, or I mean the longer method. If a complete revolution is made, then if you make a complete revolution from me up to here, then the annual displacement or the angle is going to be 2 pi or 360 because one revolution has 360 degrees. Okay, now from one, our and your displacement is given by this over this. But now, if this is theta, is a complete revolution, it means it's going to be 2 pi. Let's multiply. We have now displacement as 2 pi r. And I think this is the equation for the circumference of the sub when the complete revolution is made. So from 2, where is our 2 here? Now we put in this. So when I put in this, so that now the this distance is going to be the circumference of that sub when we have made a complete revolution t. But now, if we make the subject, 
we have this. But remember, I have to pi r over v. Now, I see r over v, I have it in terms of omega. But now, it's a reciprocal. From here, it's when I get a reciprocal of this, I get also the reciprocal of this. Then when I put this, it's equal to this, there, it's that that's what I have. And remember, now this t is the time taken for complete revolution, which we say the time taken for complete revolution is t, up to t. So that's why now our period is going to be given by 2 pi over the angular velocity. Now, this was a longer method. <laughs> From here, if you had come and say, if theta is equal to 2 pi, comma, then our t is going to be at 2 t. So this will be added now equal to 2 pi over t. So you see from here, dot t is one step. Now being a lot. <laughs> Which is, okay? But I want to be able to make you to exercise your brains. But it would not be the same if you had used it here. So that's it. See you in the next lesson. Now we are going to see how we apply the centripetal acceleration of the central motion. See you there.